So this is a this is a graphing problem here, and um, f of x equals log base two x plus two plus three. And I have to ask I have to answer a bunch of questions. The first question that I really should ask myself is what is the parent function of this of this of this right here? Our parent function of this one here is f of x equals log base 2 of x. This is a logarithmic function. It's not an exponential function. It's a logarithmic function. So I know that I have a base of 2. And all this other stuff, this plus 2 and the plus 3, and if there was an a over here, they're the eight a's, h's, and k's. So the parent function of this is f of x equals log 2x, which is a hard function to draw. So whenever I, want, whenever I need to graph a logarithmic function, I always start, I go, I'll go y is equal to log 2x, and I will change it into exponential form. I will change it, which, which is what Natalie said, 2 to the y equals x. That is the x, this, this is really important to get your head around. But this and this are identical. They are both logarithmic functions. This one is in exponential form. This one is in logarithmic form. An exponential function would be y equals 2 to the x, where our x is the exponent. But here, our y is the exponent. And if you remember, you know, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, they're inverse of one another. The x's and y's are switched. So, um, so I want to write my logarithmic function in exponential form, and I want to do that because it's just a lot easier to graph when I put it in exponential form than it is when I put it in, in logarithmic form. So the, the, the question that we just asked is 2 to the y equals x. That is still a logarithmic function. And I, I know that it's, it's very confusing. It really takes a while to get your head around it. But this is the exponential form of this logarithmic function. This would be the inverse. That is the exponential function. Right? And you can see that all I've done here is I've switched my x and my y to get an exponential function. This is an exponential, ex, exponential. This is, lo is, logarith is a logarithm. It's just a logarithm in exponential form. I'm sorry for it's so confusing. But it, but it really just takes a look. This is what, it just takes a little bit of study. And it takes like sitting there and looking at it for about oh, an hour you know, until it kind of begins to take a, a shape in your brain. All right, we, we, are we okay with that? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to graph, so I'm going to graph um, this logarithmic function here, my parent function, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graph it in exponential form because it's easier to graph that way. So and I start with my y's and I get my x's. So here's y, here's x. Let's extend the page a little bit. And I'm going to use the numbers that I like to use for exponential functions. I'm going to use 0, 1, and negative 1. So when y is 0, x is going to be 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. Did we see that? And when y is 1, x is going to be 2. And when, when y is negative 1, x is going to be 1 half. So like I said before, I, like to re I can really remember the exponential key points. The exponential function key points are 0, 1, 1b, negative 1, 1 over b. The logarithmic key points, logarithms are the inverse of exponents. The logarithmic key points are 1, 0, b, 1, and 1 over b, negative 1. I just switched the points. 
So all I really have to remember is 0, 1, 1, B, negative 1, 1 over B, because then I can just write it down and I can say, oh yeah, I just need to switch those to get the logarithmic key points. And you can see in our, in our, in our graph, in our little table that we just did, for the logarithms, I have the point 1, 0, I have the point B1, and I have the point 1 over B negative 1. So those are the points that I'm going to graph for my logarithm right here. So I'm going to put those down here. Um, 1, 0. Um, B1, so that's 2, 1. And 1 half, negative 1. Now, I know that since my exponential function has a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, my logarithmic function, the inverse, is going to have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. So this graph is going to look like that. That's what my graph is going to look like. So parent logarithmic functions have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. So now I can answer this first question, what is the domain of my logarithmic function? This is my logarithmic function. This is the parent of that logarithmic function. And the domain, well, my farthest left value, my farthest left x value is 0, and it doesn't touch it, right? It's an asymptote. So my domain starts at 0, and it goes on out to infinity, which you might remember is the range of an exponential function. Yes, range. So for me, it says label any asymptotes. Where would you just, how would you label that? Um, okay, so what I would do is this. If I'm labeling asymptotes on this, I would say, it's all, uh, it says, uh, well, first it says graph it using transformations. So let, let's get to the graphing and then we'll label the asymptotes. Yeah, Valentina. Is that domain the domain of the parent function? This is the domain of the parent function. That is not the, the domain of log base 2 of x. No, that, that's correct. This is not the domain of our, of, our, of our transform function. That is the domain of our parent function. Okay. Same, same question. OK. okay. So, um, so now, now we're going to start graphing it. So this, this is our parent function, right? And, and what do I have here is I have an H and a K. Remember, um, these two are identical. All right. So I just graph Y equals log base 2X. Even though I did it by graphing 2 to the y equals x. It's the same thing as y equals log base 2x. So now when I go to this and I look at my transformations, I can see, oh, well, the 2 is an h and the 3 is a k. So I have to move all my points to the right 2, to the right 2, and up 3. Is that, is that we go okay with that? So I'm going to take my, my, my key points that I just graphed. So I had um, uh, 1, 0. I'm going to move to the right 2 and up 3. There's my new point right there. I'm going to take 2, 1. I'm going to move it to the right 2 and up 3. And I'm going to take 1 half, negative 1. I'm going to move it to the right 2 and then up 3. And the, the really important thing I need to know to do here is I need to know that since I'm moving everything to the right two, and I have a vertical asymptote, my vertical asymptote is also going to move to the right two. My vertical asymptote, instead of being now at the y-axis, is going to be at x equals two. That's my new vertical asymptote. Yeah, that would be. Why wouldn't it, why wouldn't it be a negative? Yeah. Because I messed up. Why, why, why? You know, here I am thinking this. I'm like 10 minutes into this video and I messed up, you know? All right. So 
Um, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just going to redo, okay, right? So if you're listening to this, uh, I apologize. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do a quick redo here, all right? It's not to the right two. See, that's where you should have caught me. It's not to the right two. It's the left two. And I, I really hate when I do that on a video, right? But it happens. And I, I, I think the point will still be across. Okay? So, left two. Negative two is my asymptote. Okay? So now I'm going to move my points over. It was, it was over two. Over two, up three. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Over two. One, two, three, and then over two, one, two, three, and then over two, one, two, three. So now it looks better like that's better. I think that's better. Is that better? Okay, that's better. Okay. And um, so these points right here are, this is negative three halves comma two. This is um, uh, negative one comma three, and this point here is one comma four, and you'll see why I write those down there in just a minute. Okay, are, are we okay with that? I, I, I've been corrected. The point is in one four. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. It is. It is. It is. It is a zero form. This is going to be like the world's worst video. You know that? Zero form. Right, because because the point was was at um, the point was at two one, and if I'm moving left two up three, that's the new point. You're correct. We're, we're so now we're okay. Yes. Okay. So um, so what's the domain of my transform function? Okay. Domain of my transform function because I have my vertical asymptote at negative two. It's at negative two to infinity. What is the range of my transform function? All real numbers, right? My, my transform function is going to go down there forever. It's going to keep going up forever. It's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So logarithmic function, even when it's transformed, is going to have a range of negative infinity to positive infinity. Is that good? Before I do the inverse algebraically here, what points are going to be on the inverse of this function. This is my transform function in green. I want to know what points in blue I need to put to, to, for the inverse. The opposite. So, Valentina, go ahead. So, the exact opposite of the original function, so um, it would be 0, 1. No, no, no. That would be, that would be the inverse. Uh, that would be oh. the inverse. I want the inverse of my transform function. Um, then it would be two negative three halves. So, so two negative three halves. Uh, three negative one. Three negative one. And four zero, right? And am I going to have any asymptotes on my transformed graph? What's my asymptote going to be? If I have a vertical asymptote on my logarithmic graph of x equals negative 2, but it's going to be the horizontal asymptote of my transformed graph. It's going to be y equals negative 2. So I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote on my transform um, inverse of y equals negative 2, and my graph is going to look like that. Yes, Marina. Um, I'm having, wait, where did you get the negative 2 from? Um, my, my vertical asymptote on my logarithmic graph oh, okay. is x equals negative 2, right? So the horizontal asymptote of my transform, of my transform, of the horizontal asymptote of my inverse is going to be y equals negative 2. 
right? I'm just switching my X's and my Y's. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah? Okay. So just notice on the graph here, and I, I know it's like not the best graph in the world, but it's, it's not, not the worst either. Here's my line, my line Y equals X, and you can see that the green graph and the blue graph are reflected over the line y equals x, because that's all inverse graphs are going to reflect over the, over the line y equals x. So if you're checking it on your calculator, you want to make sure that it does that. So this is the, uh, this is the original function. So let's see if we can use algebra to find the inverse. So I go y equals log base 2 x plus 2 plus 3. I'm going to switch my x's and y's. So x equals log base 2, y plus 2, plus 3. I'm going to um, solve for y. So I'm going to get rid of my debris over here of plus 3. So I'm going to go x minus 3 is equal to log base 2, y plus 2. Now I have to kind of liberate my y from the logarithm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put this in parentheses and I'm going to exponentiate it. So I'm going to take my 2 as a base. Answer to a logarithm is an exponent. That means that is my exponent. 2 is my base. So I have 2 to the x minus 3 is equal to y plus 2. And I'll subtract 2 from both sides. So I get 2 to the x minus 3 minus 2 is equal to y. So I get f minus 1 of x is equal to 2 to the x minus 3 minus 2. So this is the inverse. Did I make another mistake? No. I oh, good. Wait, hang on one second. This is the inverse of the logarithmic function. And you can see that it is an exponential function because I have it, my variable is now in the exponent. So let's just finish off the a couple uh, other points on this um, on this uh, problem here. If I kind of go back to my graph, um, we had the domain of the, the domain of the function, the domain of the function was, that was our logarithmic function, was negative 2 to infinity. And the range of the inverse was negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. The range of the function was negative infinity to positive infinity. And you can see that for the blue, right, my domain, the exponential function, is now my range. And the range is now my domain. So we just reversed the domain and the range for the function and its inverse. Um, and then finally, well, when we graphed it on the same coordinate plane, um, well, we did so, instead of redoing the whole transformation, all we had to do was know that it's an exponential function, the inverse is an exponential function that the, that the vertical asymptote of the original function becomes the horizontal asymptote of the inverse, and then swip, just flip our key points. That's all we had to do, and then we could graph the, uh, the inverse function.